everyone, and welcome to BCPS TV Math 8. I'm Mr. Parker, and this week I have a co host. Hi, I'm Mrs. Potter. You may have seen me on uh, BCPS TV for Algebra 1. And today we're going to be talking about solving equations. Our learning outcome for today is to use multiple representations to solve equations. In the course that you're in right now, you've learned how to solve equations, but today we're going to focus on different representations, including very visual ways to solve equations. These lessons are the same as the material in your print packet for the week of June 8th. Let's think about it. This is an activity called splat. We know the total value of the dots should be 9, as represented in the top right-hand corner, and we can see that there are three solid dots and three half-shaded dots. What is the value of the dots under the splat? This is the same process we will use to solve equations. We have something that we don't know, how many, what the value of the dots under the splat is, and we're going to use our reasoning to figure out what that value actually is. So let's learn about it. This is our first example where we're going to solve an equation by using a guess and check method and organizing that information into a table. The equation that I'm going to solve is 2 minus x equals 2x minus 1. So when I'm guessing and checking, I like to pick friendly numbers. So I'm going to start with 3 because that's my favorite number. I'm going to substitute 3 into each side of the equation. So each expression that is on each side of the equation. So 2 minus x and 2x minus 1. And I'm going to evaluate that expression and see if I get the same result. If I do, I know that the value that I selected was a solution, and if I don't, I need to try again. So let's substitute 3 into both of those expressions. 2 minus 3 is negative 1, and 2 times 3 minus 1 is 5. My outputs are not the same, so x equals 3 is not a solution to that equation. So my next friendly number that I'm going to pick is 0, because I think that that will make the calculations a little simpler. 2 minus 0 is 2 and 2 times 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Those outputs are not the same, so x equals 0 is not a solution to the equation. So I'm going to pick another number. This time I'm going to pick negative 1. I'm going to evaluate that in both of the expressions. 2 minus negative 1 is 3, and 2 times negative 1 minus 1 is negative 3. Those outputs are not the same, so that is not a solution. I can also see that my outputs are getting further and further away from one another. So there was a distance of 3 between 2 and negative 1, and there's a distance of 6 between 3 and negative 3. So I know that I'm moving further away from the actual solution to this equation. So my last guess is 1, because that's greater than my guess of x equals 0. And when I substitute 1 into both of those expressions, I get the same output. So x equals 1 is the solution to this equation. Let's learn about it. Our goal for today was to learn about representations of solving equations. So we're going to represent 2 minus x equals 2x minus 1 with algebra tiles. 2 minus x is the same as 2 plus the opposite of x, or 2 plus negative 1x. And 2x minus 1 is the same as x plus x plus negative 1. So I'm going to use those tiles to represent my two sides for my equation here. And to solve an equation, I need to figure out the value of one green x tile. So I am going to try to eliminate the negative 1x or the red x tile on the left hand side by adding the opposite of negative 1x, which is a positive x. So I've added a positive x tile to both sides. Um, and then because the right hand side has three green x tiles, but also a negative one, I'm going to add the opposite of a negative one to my next step so that I can get rid of the, uh, the negative one on the right-hand side. So now I can eliminate my zero pair. So you'll notice on the left-hand side, the x and the negative one x add to zero. And on the right-hand side, the negative one and positive one add to zero. So what I'm left with is three on the left-hand side and three x on the right-hand side. That means that each green x is worth one tile or one unit. And I can check that out by substituting into the original equation. So I'm going to replace all of the x tiles in the original equation with a one and the opposite of x tiles with a negative one. 
which we'll see right here. And then again, eliminate my zero pairs. So I have a positive one and a negative one on both sides. And I can see that I'm left with a true statement, which is that one equals one. That means that I have found the solution to this equation. There's another strategy that we can use to solve the equation two minus x equals two x minus one. This is an algebraic approach. You'll see my math on the left and my justifications on the right. Remember, my goal is to find the value of x that makes this equation true. I'm going to begin with my given equation, and my first step is to apply the addition property of equality. I'm going to be adding one to both sides. You might notice that there's a zero pair here that I've circled in red that showed up with your algebra tile representation. When I combine and simplify um, any like terms, I see that my equivalent equation or the result is three minus X equals two X. But again, my goal is to find the value of X, which is unknown. So I need to continue to do a little bit of algebraic manipulation. This time I'm going to use the addition property of equality, but instead of adding one, I'm going to add X. Again, you might notice that a zero pair shows up and that was um, shown in the algebra tile representation as well. So when I simplify, my equivalent equation is three equals three X, which can be written as three X equals three. Sometimes it's easier when the variable is on the left. I'm going to now use the division property of equality so that I can find the value of one X. Right now I have three X's equals three and I wanna know the value of one X. And in this case, X is equal to one. This is one way that I can use the properties of algebra to solve this equation, but it's not the only way. So make sure that you carefully take a look at this problem and see if there's another way that you might have solved the equation. Let's try and solve this equation using a graph. Now, if you have internet access, you can go to desmos.com and graph it on there. If you have your device at home, you can use the Microsoft Mathematics application, or if you have graph paper, you can graph it by hand. What we're going to graph are two equations, one that sets y equal to the left-hand side of our equation, or the expression on the left-hand side, which is y equals 2 minus x. This line gives us all the pairs of numbers that when I substitute a number in for x, 2 minus that number is the y value. So for instance, if I chose 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. And then I'm going to write y equals the right-hand expression, which was 2x minus 1. And wherever these two lines intersect will be an x and y value that satisfy both equations. In this case, the point is 1, 1, because 2 minus 1 is 1, and 2 times 1 minus 1 is also 1. So we found a value for x that makes both sides the same value at the same time, which is 1. So let's try what you've learned. On the screen, there are four equations and four visual models for those equations. Our job will be to match the visual model with its equation. I'll give you a few seconds to take a look at the equations and the models, and then I'll sh share with you what my thinking is about this process. The first equation, four plus two X equals negative X minus two, matches up with the bar model representation. I can see four unit pieces and two X bars on the left-hand side of my model and on the left-hand side of my equation. And I can see a negative X and two negative unit pieces, which represents negative X minus two. The next equation, three X plus two equals six plus X, is represented with the bar model. The left-hand side of my equation, 3x plus 2, is the top of my model, the top of my bar model. I can see x plus x plus x, which is the same as 3x plus 2. And the left, the, I'm sorry, the right-hand side of my equation is represented by the bottom of my bar model. And I can see 6 plus x or x plus 6 if I use the commutative property of addition. The next equation, 1 half x plus 1 equals 3, is represented by the graphical representation. There are two lines, a blue line and a red line. The blue line represents the equation y equals 3. So I can see that on my model. And the red line is represented by the equation y equals 1 half x plus 1. I can see the y-intercept of 0, 1 and the slope of 1 half in my graphical representation. 
the cool thing about the graphical representation is that the point of intersection really easily shows me my solution. And the solution to that equation is x is equal to 4. So by the process of elimination, the last um, equation matches up with the table. But I want to do a quick think aloud so that you can hear what my thinking is for how I match those up. One of the things that I did was I looked at the left-hand side of the equation, and I thought about that as a sequence. So when I look at my table, I can see that the x values are increasing by 1, and the y values are decreasing by 3. So there's a common difference of negative 3, which shows up um, with this minus 3 right here in my equation. I also notice that when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. So that shows up with my starting value um, in my equation. But what I'm looking for is the x value that gives me 4 when I substitute it into the left-hand side. So for example, if I substitute in negative 2, I get 7. And I can see that in my table, but that's not what I'm looking for based on my equation. I'm looking for um, an output of 4. And that happens when x is equal to negative 1. 1 minus 3 times negative 1 is equal to 4. So the solution is x equals negative 1. Let's try another think about it task. The purpose of the think about it tasks in today's lesson are to build your reasoning skills around solving equations. I know you don't see an equation on the screen, but the thinking that you're going to use is very similar to the thinking that you use when you solve an equation. These are called solve me mobiles, and the goal of a solve me mobile is to figure out the values of the, in this particular mobile, the blue water drop, the purple square, and the orange heart. But there are some conditions that are shown in the hanger diagrams or in the mobiles. On the mobile on the left, you can see that the total value of those shapes needs to be 10. But remember, we want to keep our mobile or our hanger balanced, so the value on the left and the value on the right needs to be the same. On the mobile on the right, we don't know what the total value is, but we know that, again, we need to keep our mobile or our hanger balanced, so the value on the left and the value on the right need to be the same. My suggestion is to start with the mobile that gives you a total value of 10 and start thinking about what values would make that hanger balanced. You got this. Use some of that reasoning to figure out the values of the unknown um, shapes in this puzzle. So let's solve the equation 3 times the quantity x minus 1 equals 15 by using the guess and check strategy and organizing the information into a table. This equation looks a little bit different than the equation that we were working with earlier because I see that there are some parentheses on the left-hand side, and I'm also noticing that there aren't any um, variables on the right-hand side. So let's do our guessing and checking. So I'm going to begin with a friendly number, 5 and I'm going to substitute that into the expression 3 times the quantity x minus 1. 5 minus 1 is 4, so I have 3 minus 4, or I'm sorry, 3 times 4, and I'm trying to get to 15. So x equals 5 is not a solution to this equation. So let's try x equals 4. Again, I'm going to substitute that into the expression 3 times the quantity x minus 1. I get a resulting expression of 3 times 3, which is 9. And again, that's not um, my target value. My target value is 15. So x equals 4 is not a solution to this equation. So let's try 6. The reason why I'm trying 6 is because when I tried 5, I got a result of 12. And while that wasn't the solution, it was closer than when I, than when I tried x equals 4. When I tried x equals 4, my result was 9, meaning I was getting further from um, the solution. So when I substitute 6 into the expression 3 times the quantity x minus 1, I get 3 times 5, which is equal to 15. And that means that the solution to the equation is x equals 6. Beware, it's not x equals 15. The solution is the x value. Let's learn about it. We're going to solve this equation 3 times the quantity x minus 1 equals 15 using a bar model. So our bar model means that we're going to be looking at lengths. So the lengths of the two expressions here are the same, it means they're equal. So the top expression is x minus 1 plus x minus 1 plus x minus 1, and the bottom expression is the number 15. And those should have the same length. That's what the equal sign is telling us. Um, but 
we don't want to work with x minus 1. We want to figure out what x is. So what we need to do is look at the relationship between x and x minus 1. And a bar of length x minus 1 is one unit shorter than a bar of length x. So if we were to add 1 to each of the x minus 1s, we would have a bar that is a length of x. Now, if I wanted to make all of those x minus 1s into x's, I would need to add a length of 3. And you'll notice now our bar models are not the same length because the top bar is longer than the 15 because we added 3 to it. So I can make them the same length again by adding 3 to the bottom as well. Once I add 3 to the bottom, I can look at this as x plus x plus x needs to equal 18, or the length of an x is equal to 6. We're going to look at this same equation, same bar model, but a slightly different strategy this time. This time, we're going to set up the bar model the same way that three groups of x minus 1 should have the same length as 15. But this time, I'm going to look at just one individual piece here. I know that if each of my three pieces is x minus 1, and that gives me a total of 15, that one of those pieces must be equal to a length of 5. And if a number minus 1 has a length of 5, then that number has to have a length of 5 plus 1 or a length of 6. So two different ways to solve the same problem. In both cases, we found that x was equal to 6. So you just got to see Mr. Parker model how to solve the equation 3 times the quantity x minus 1 equals 15 by using bar models. And he showed you two different ways to do that. So I'm going to make a connection to those two different bar models by showing an algebraic approach and an alternate algebraic approach. So let's begin with the top representation. I'm going to start with my given equation. And first, I'm going to apply the distributive property. I'm going to multiply 3 times x and I'm going to multiply 3 times negative 1. I'm going to simplify that expression by multiplying 3 times x and 3 times negative 1, and my equivalent equation is 3x minus 3 equals 15. I'm going to apply the addition property of equality, and I'm going to add 3 to both sides, and my resulting equation is 3x equals 18. This is an equivalent equation to the equation that we started with. We're just applying some um, properties of algebra. Last, I'm going to apply the division property of equality, divide both sides by 3, and I get x is equal to 6. That's what we found when we were doing, using the guess and check method and then the bar model method. So let's take a look at that alternate approach. I have the given equation 3 times the quantity x minus 1 equals 15. I can start by applying the division property of equality, and I can divide both sides by 3. My equivalent resulting equation is x minus 1 equals 5. I can apply the addition property of equality by adding 1 to both sides, and I get the result x equals 6. So you can see, just like with the bar models, there's more than one way to solve this problem algebraically. Let's use graphing as our method for solving this equation. We are going to, just like we did before, type in y is equal to the left-hand expression, which was 3 times the quantity x minus 1. And y is equal to the right-hand side of the equation, which was y equals 15. Now, when I typed y equals 3 times the quantity x minus 1, the line popped up, but y equals 15 did not show up. And that's because it's not within our window here, so I'm going to use the zoom out button to zoom out a few times until I can see the line. Oh, there it is. And I am looking for the point of intersection, which is 615. And we have to be a little careful here. The variable that we were trying to solve for was x, which is 6 in this ordered pair, not 15. So the equation, the solution to this equation is x equals 6. So let's try it out. We're going to match the equation to the representation. I'm going to start at the top of this row here with negative 8 equals 4 times the quantity 1 minus x. Now, I have lots of representations to choose from, and I want to find a 1 minus x. And if I look at the graph, uh, I, I do not see a horizontal line there because that would represent the left side of the equation, y equals negative 8. So I don't think it's going to be the graph. Looking at the bar model, I see two x's represented there and actually uh, because of the distributive property I would expect four x's here or four 
opposite of x's, negative 4x's, which I don't see. Uh, same thing with the algebra tiles. I'm not seeing four negative x's. Um, so I don't think that's it. So I'm going to check the table real quick. And if I look and I substitute in negative 3, 1 minus negative 3 would be 4. 4 times 4 is 16. It looks like that table will be a good match. So the first, the first equation is represented through this table. Now, the second equation is a little tricky. Uh, there's a couple of terms here that need to be distributed or, or not need to be, but could be combined. Um, and I don't, it's going to be tough for me to see if those representations are here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine my like terms. So I'm going to distribute that negative sign, combine my like terms, and I get negative 2x minus 11 equals 2x plus 1. Um, and I don't see in the bar model, the top row has x's, but the bottom row doesn't. In the algebra tiles, I have three x's on one side, and I don't have three x's. So I'm thinking that this might be the graph. And if I look at the graph and look at the slope and y-intercept, I see that I have a slope of 2 right here and a y-intercept of 1, which would represent the right-hand side of the equation. And it looks as though negative 2 would be the slope for this other line, and its y-intercept would be negative 11. So I think I feel pretty good that that goes with the graph. Now I have 3 times the quantity x minus 1 equals the opposite of x plus 3x minus 2. That looks like it is the algebra tiles here. I could see three groups of x minus 1 and then a group of the opposite of x, some more 3x's and negative 2 tiles. So that is the algebra tiles. And then last but certainly not least, we have the bar model. Two groups of x minus 3 or 2 times the quantity x minus 3. And I can see right here in the table a 2x minus 3. It's going to come up with a nicer animation there. Uh, and that has a length of negative 8. Awesome. Our learning outcome for today is to use multiple representations to solve equations. In the course that you're in right now, you've learned how to solve equations, but today we're going to focus on different representations, including very visual ways to solve equations. These lessons are the same as the material in your print packet for the week of June 8th. Thank you for joining us here at Math and ACPS TV, and a special thank you to Mrs. Potter for joining us today. Stay safe out there. Bye, everyone.